and then somehow I didn't throw it away like the other 50 boards I threw away or hundreds of boards I threw away. So I was digging through that and I found that and I thought that's, I'm going to cherish that one. You know. Hey, well, I, want, I want to thank everybody for joining us today um, to kind of look back at what um, Bill Castor did for all of us, you know, and I'm, pr I'm pretty fortunate that uh, I was able to leave Sims and go with Castor and he made some great quality skateboards, you know. Yeah. But, um, great surfboards too. <laughs> yeah, that that that's what yeah. kind of, that kind of definitely <laughs> sparked my interest. <laughs> I I think I think it was the surfboards too. It's, yeah. Your boards are awesome, but the deal on getting cool caster surfboards was too much too good to be true. Yeah, I mean well, I, well, that, was, that was a he, thing that pulled Wally completely. Yeah, I mean he he definitely made quality surfboards long before he'd made skateboards and I think you know the high quality that that, that Bill held it himself made quality skateboards also so. so if you guys are new to zoom you could do the gallery view so you can see everybody at one time it should be on your upper screen on the right thank you there we go appreciate that Ken Come on, Spetsola, get with the program. Yeah. <laughs> Wednesday, I'm talking up with the Jetsons here. Yeah, I don't Jeff. Hey, what's up, Wally? Good, how you doing? Everything's good, huh? Yeah, everything's good. Quiet in Montana. And there's Mitchell. Mitchell oh. just joined us. M M Mitchell is one of the uh, original amateur guys on, on the teams, along with Kyle Jensen up there in the corner, or at least in, in my corner. Gibson's here. Finally, oh, guy. Hey, congratulations, John. <laughs> There's Mitchell. You know. Hey. What's up, guys? Howdy. Congratulations, John. <laughs> you know what's going we, on? We, hey, yeah, we, we, we were pretty honored to have Gibson on the team pretty early on, you know? Uh, and, and we have we have to thank Stropa for that. He, he found him in, in Texas and and then we shipped them out here to Cali. Oh man, that was a life changer awesome. right there, man. <laughs> Very honored. You know. <laughs> and um, you know, I'm I don't I don't know how many of you guys bought caster boards back in the day. I still have them. Oh, I, I I got them for got free. Them, I didn't have to buy them. <laughs> hey, Grant. Well, I I think I think the best thing for for me is is um. Once I got in the caster and, and start going down to the factory and and being in all of, of um, how all the surfboards are made, um, we got Ken, we got Watson to to make the caster boards and, and his shop was directly across from the, the caster factory. So I actually became an employee for for Watson. So if if you bought my board or surfboards that. I pretty much hand laid up probably eighty percent of all those boards. Oh wow! And, and so, so when you bought my model, you, you truly bought my model that, that I actually helped manufacture. And, and I think I think the best thing for us is is that for all my for all the team riders, I got to cherry pick all the all the wood and and mill them down so they're a little bit narrow thinner than than the the ones we, we did for the public. And so we shaved a lot of weight off them. So I think, I mean, back then, I think skateboard <coughs> weighed just about two pounds a piece. I think we got some of our boards down to a pound and a half. So, and then- and The ones and then that we, were hollowed out with the foam in the middle wallet? We, we did, we did a, a couple of those. <laughs> you know, I think, I think we got it down to like three quarters of a pound when we put foam in the middle of it. You know, and then, and then with, with caster, being a surfboard guy and, and, and understanding fiberglass and, and, and the resin epoxy and all that, there, there are certain ways you can put the fiberglass in the board to make them a little bit more, little, have a little bit more life or have a little bit more stiffness in them. So um, we, 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 we were pretty lucky to, to have that good of quality skateboards back then. 
uh, well, instead of just the basic white glue layups, you know. So, hi Heather, how are you? We 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 sure miss your dad. And then I I, I saw that uh, Dan is on there too. Uh, how how old were you guys back then, when when your dad had the shop? I don't think I was born. I was yeah like well I he died when I was in tenth grade. In tenth grade. Yeah. So I remember you and your brother. <laughs> so. Hey John, what why don't you tell us about what when you first came out to Cali? Who me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, first time I came out to Cal, I didn't, you know, when Strobel first found me and like said, you're going to California. I want you to come to Del Mar Hester series, 1979. Right. So after he said that, I go to school all year long. Right. I don't hear anything from Strobel or anything, but I'm telling everybody I'm going, I'm going. And I tell my mom, everyone. I'm going to California and I go to school all year long, right? I don't hear anything and everyone's tired of me saying that. So then, <laughs> very, very last day of school, very last day of school, I walk in my house and, you know, I'm a latchkey kid. My mom worked at NASA, nobody's home, you know, and the phone rings, I answer it, there's Strobel. He, you know, that Southern California accent, you know, hey, you ready to come to California? I'm like, Fuck yeah, let's do it. Let's go. And he's like, all right, you're playing leads. Eight tomorrow morning. Gets me all the information. I tell my mom, I'm going to California. You got to take me to the airport. And she's like, yeah, sure, John. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever. She doesn't believe me at all. And I get her up in the morning, make her take me to the airport. And she's going to let me get my heart broken because she doesn't believe it. And I get to the ticket counter. Boom. My ticket's there. I'm like, I'm leaving. She's like, wait a minute. Wait. You're not going to California. You're only 14. And you're not going to California to stay with a bunch of, you know, the lands, land of Manson and all that stuff, you know? <laughs> and then Strobel, we had to call Strobel, put his mom on the phone, and then then Chris put Bill Caster on the phone, and then they talked my mom into it. She's like, okay, you can go, you know. It's only 14. Boom. There I go, off to California. <laughs> That's right. And then it gets even better, really. I get there and I'm not like walking around because I hadn't met Wally yet, you know. And I'm walking <clears> through the airport. And I recognize him right off. Hey, I go, hey, Tommy Newey. He's like, it's in a way, you know. We always thought it was, you know, <laughs> in He's like, correct me. It's in a way. I'm like, okay. So we go outside. All of a sudden, this red Volkswagen comes pulling up super fast Ooh. and it's strobel driving this old vw bug you know so we put my stuff in bags in the hood which is kind of strange for me I don't, I don't know volkswagen bugs that much and then i get he goes yeah i get in the back i walk in the back seat i put my foot in there it goes straight to the ground to the street right through the right through the floorboard <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, it's Flintstone. It's Flintstone style, you know? And then he's driving off. You know how Chris drives, man, all over the place. Screaming, screaming. <laughs> and we get up to the top of the hill to the exit for uh, Del Mar. And he looks over at Wally and goes, oh, we're out of gas. He's like, what? <laughs> he's like, out of gas. So we're coasting all the way down the hill to the exit to Del Mar. And then we had me and Wally had to get out push to the AM PM right there. We're like pushing. <laughs> now I remember uh, Scott Dunlap pulls up beside us in his car. He's like, hey Chris, you need some help? He's like, yeah, can you get us pushed aside? He's like, forget you, man. He took off, man. <laughs> it was, that's my first experience in California, you know. That's then right. we went to Del Mar, saw all my superheroes from the 70s and skated. And then it went on from there. Pretty we cool. with a bunch of superhero. Man, we, we judged that contest, Wally. You, me, Shogo, and uh, and man, John, you skated with some incredibly good people in that contest. Oh man, I couldn't believe it. You know, 
You know, I couldn't believe it getting there. I couldn't really skate the pool because it's such a snake session, you know. <laughs> Everybody was there, you know, skating. It was cra It was like a dream come true. And it was. It's what brought me here right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I'm so honored. You know, and a lot of people back here in Texas and stuff, they don't really, only a, there's only probably a handful of people that really remember those early days like that, you know, because they all remember me from later in the 80s and stuff. They don't really know about those early caster days. Hmm. But it was awesome, man. Life changer. Yep. Yeah. So you want to hear more stories? I can go on. <laughs> awesome story, dude. <laughs> I, can well, go I had on a question. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. John Gibson, oh, I had a question for oh. you. Wow. All right. Um, you know, like I saw you in the mag and stuff, and um, you know, you're like you said, you're a relatively unknown guy, and you came out of nowhere, you know, and we're ripping. And so my question is, do you think if you lived in California, you would have fared better in the contest? Because Del Mar wasn't easy to skate with all the different walls and stuff, you know, but you seem to just rip that place and have all the lines and big airs and ollies. And I remember your fakie ollie disaster hangups you did. And um, so if you, if you lived on the West Coast, would you have done better? I mean... How, how did well, you treat that place so good? Was there stuff in Texas that was comparable to Del Mar? Or, um, you know, I kind of just was wondering. No, there was nothing in Texas that compared to the California parks. Nothing, really. All of our skate parks in Texas did not have vertical. You know, so we had to build ramps to replicate, to get weightless, to, you know, to catch airs. And... Uh, I wanted to drop out of high school and stay in California, but Bill Castor, he uh, promised my mom he will all, uh, that he will always send me home to go back to school. I'm like, damn, man, shit. I don't want to fucking stay in California, you know? I wanted to. But, you know, Chris and Tom and Bill, they made sure I went home every time. And then, you know, then it, Years went on when I graduated high school and stuff. That's when skating went all. The whole industry dropped out, you know. Wouldn't come back out to California anymore, and I was really bummed. <laughs> really bummer. But anyway, you're talking about that fakey Ollie hang-up thing. I named that the Caster Disaster. So back then, <laughs> I wanted to straighten that up. You skated against Kyle, too, right? What's that? You skated against Kyle in those contests, and Mitch. Yeah, uh huh. I stayed at Kyle's house, man. And what was that, Rancho <laughs> Santa Fe? Yeah. It was, yeah, it was so nice, man. It was great. We had a good time, and we go to the movies, do all, you know, <laughs> go hang out. It was, it was cool. So he had that water bed. He let me sleep on, but it had a small leak in it. Every time I woke <laughs> up, I was so wet. <laughs> I, I guess it was from the leaky water bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good times, man. It was great. Yeah, was I mean, it's like a dream. I mean, flying into California and to San Diego that first time, it was like I was so shocked. You know, I never flown on a plane that long. I mean, we went right by the mountains. You know, how they dive into San Diego over the mountains. Man, it was scary, but awesome. It was very good times. Yeah, I could go on to so many stories, man. I don't know if we have enough time. Well, don't stop. That's, that's what we're all here for, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and then, you know, staying at, in Lucadia when y'all had that apartment there with your mom and dad and staying in, uh, uh, where was that, Monterey, Wally, where your parents yeah. live? Yeah, Park. staying there with your brother and – who else was, you had like a ton of skaters there, like Palmer, Scott McCray, uh, McCray. I mean, I could just go on. You had a bunch of people. We always keep waking up with our toenails painted because uh, Wally's painting our toenails and we go to sleep. <laughs> Learned how to sleep with my socks on after that. And, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely dangerous falling asleep at our houses. <laughs> I know, always. Man. Wally, he was such a prankster, man. He, it was cool. It was fun. <laughs> and then staying over at Strobel's house in Sierra Madre, man. I got to know the whole, all the kids in the neighborhood and stuff. It was cool. It was like I lived there. Right, you just go straight. You know, Strope was off going to college or whatever he's doing, and I'm just like skating around and meet other skaters in the neighborhood. We go hiking up in the mountains, swimming in the water holes, stealing avocados off the people people's driveway <laughs> with the grind them off. Good times, man. Really good times. Yeah. Well, hey Strope, why don't you tell us the story how how you how you discovered Jack Gibson when we're on Gibson? Um, well, I saw him in Tulsa at the opening of the Tulsa Park. Right, you were there, John. Yeah, I remember the first time though. The first time you, you guys were... came to the Gulf Coast Skate Park, and yeah, that was my local skate park in Houston. Right, and we had a huge crowd there. And but the owners were, would only let me, Ken Fillion, and this other guy, Doug So Far, escape with you guys. You guys pulled up in a big old black limousine, get out like rock stars, man. Wow. It's like, oh man, <laughs> y'all walk in, start ripping the park, and we're skating with you, y'all, and everything. And then, well, I mean, because I worked at the skate park, I was park patrol. You know, they paid me like two sixty-five an hour, make sure people wore equipment, and plus they served cokes. And I was like serving some uh, cokes to people. And you came up and go, here, here's, here's a caster board. You're out there, rip it. You know, and you gave me one of your wedge tail ones. It was badass, man. And then probably six, I guess y'all were still on the same tour. I uh, went to Oklahoma. You know, it was probably about a few months later. I went to Oklahoma and that's when you came in there and I was skating that plexiglass. I had learned ollies in between there because when it came out, you and sure did. Yeah. <laughs> and we're skating that ramp. Uh, what's that? It's like a Pepsi ramp or the uh, tracker ramp, kind of, they had in Tulsa. And you're like, God damn. You're like, you want to ride for Caster? I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Boom. And that was. But you can go ahead and tell the story. Tell your part of the story, how you had to deal with Newton and stuff. Well, he, he was a little ticked off, especially in Houston. And, uh, I went down, back down there, I saw you skate down there again, and you were just popping these insane ollies. And I'm all, nobody can do an ollie like that. Not even Gelfin could do them that good. And uh, I was like, man, you, you, this guy's got to come skate for us. And he was threatening, he wanted to kill me and everything else. And I was like, any time, man, wherever you want. So uh, you ended up coming the right way. I said, he's – what are you going to stay down here and, you know, Zorlack out or what? Are you going to come to Cali and freaking learn how to skate? And uh, yeah. you made the right choice. Oh, definitely. And I remember uh, Jeff Newton, he came up to me and goes, so I heard Chris Stropo asked you to ride for Caster. I go, yeah, he did. He, he's like, well, what'd you say? I go, hell yeah. And he <laughs> threw his arms off, all pissed off, walked <laughs> off. And then I saw you talking to him. And then you went and pulled some uh, tracker mags out of your skate bag and gave to him to try to make him feel better, you know. <laughs> it <funny>. didn't help. <laughs> no, I didn't, man. It's bitter. It was really bitter. And, 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 hey, Kyle, when, when, do you remember who asked you? or Was it Wally or me that asked you to skate for us, Kyle? I think it was you. You were kind of my mentor back then with the – Bio airs and the inverts and the rock and rolls and rock and roll slides. It was pretty, uh, yeah. And uh, a lot of people thought you were me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember going in there and Kyle skating, man. It was like he was, man. Y'all were like kind of skating the same. And Kyle was fucking, he was killing it, man. It was like, I don't know, fucking. It was like a dream, man, to me, really. <laughs> and then we then we got Mitchell, and Mitchell looked like he was just, you know, surfing at suckouts when he was skating. It was amazing. You know, <laughs> Long was had more Super style. Super styly. Yeah, I, styly. I can't remember when I joined the team, but I know that it had to be probably the same time as you, Kyle, right? 
Yeah, yeah, because we were hanging out together even long before. Exactly. In the Kona Bowl and surfing. Exactly. Uh, all I remember days were hanging out with Mitchell. We'd, we'd go surf George's in the morning, and then we'd go to your house and make – you'd always make these great smoothies. And then, <laughs> and then we'd learn how – we you try to teach us how to – or teach me how to play the guitar. And I just remember your mom says, well, I don't think you got a career in music there, Wally. <laughs> 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 uh, but I don't know if everybody knows, Mitchell's a, a very good jazz guitarist, and – and he travels all over the world playing and a lot a lot of Brazilian type music, correct, Mitchell? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of I I played it in I actually I moved to Colorado. Um I wanna say it was you know, early eighties. First like probably I, I mean I don't remember anything, but what I remember about that is that I moved to Colorado, got into skiing, and then I got into music and I Forgot about my path as a skateboarder, so this is like mem jogging my memory. It was a radical change, but it was cool. Because I was, you know, skateboarding up to the end, a lot of other things. That whole life, skateboarding, actually, you know, the rest of my life, was in touch with it. After that, it happened. That's bad art. <laughs> and so, what you, you you went to Durango. Yeah. Because that, that's where your parents moved. Exactly. And, um, Sonny, Sonny Miller and I stayed at Mitch's uh, house. Right. Remember when we drove up? We drove up from New Mexico. Exactly, yeah. I and remember. then we went, we went uh, snowboarding. Four of us, tra uh, we traded two uh, winter sticks and we hiked up Purgatory. It was closed. It wasn't even open. Right. Wasn't Wally there? No, I I, I didn't come. I know that. No, that's, it was, it was one of your friends. It was one of your friends, and then and then Sonny and I, we hiked up and we we I think we had Sorrells. Yeah, I have some. Four of us traded two boards. <laughs> I actually have a video of that. It's it's pretty funny. It's just basically like we went bowling. <laughs> okay. In Durango. In Durango. Yeah. That's so cool. You. Thank you. That's all I remember. <laughs> man, I miss Sunny, man. What a, what a horrible loss, man. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Well, okay, well, well if you guys have any questions, you know, just fire away, and, and we'll try and answer them. So. Well, and since we have you know, Wally, since we have Grant on there. Um, I mean, his perspective on he was he got to witness everything, especially being right in the park. And, and and Grant's probably one of the best historians, him and Bill, of all of Del Mar and all the guys that were up there. And saw guys, you know, start Hawk was skating there, you could barely skate. And then, you know, as he progressed and Gator and everybody else. So I mean it, it, it Grant has a, he's got a history of the place, especially the early history. Well, I remember who, uh, Gibson. Uh, yeah. You, I think, I was at work when you showed up. And then, and oh, then uh, were you I, with Wally? You were working at Del Mar, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you came up, and, and that's the first time I ever saw you. Yeah, you were like the, one of the first pe persons I met when I came to California. Yeah. When Chris introduced me to you. So, John, did you go straight from the airport to the skate park? Yes, uh-huh. And that's when we were in Chris Tropel's <laughs> Volkswagen, ran out of gas, coasted <laughs> all the way down the hill, into the AMPM right there by Denny's. And then I remember we got gas and everything, and then we drive up to Del Mar to go in. I remember the marquee, I'll never forget. It said, look sharp. That's it. That's when... To, from the Joe Jackson album. Look sharp. It's pretty cool. It's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Question about yeah, the, uh, the boards. Who was responsible for the design of the, uh, the graphic for Caster and the, the grip tape and the pattern? Because the, the image of Caster 
um, was a big part of it. Just the look and the design. Who, who was responsible for that? Did Bill do that or did somebody else? That, 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 would, that would have been Bill and Paul Caster. Um, Paul, Paul was the airbrusher at, at Caster and he, he did, he, he screened up a lot of, a lot of the Caster boards and, and if, if you saw the Caster surf logo, it, it's more rounded. Right. And exactly. Caster sat with Chris and I and Curtis Hesselgrave and, and he wanted a, a different look and that's why it, it's a lot more straight and a lot more angular anglers so yeah, we it, it, the, yeah. The, the yeah definitely bill, bill, bill had a a lot of of input on the way he wanted his product to look he he, he definitely wasn't gonna make shit product you know but the way yeah, the grip tape the, was done and everything it looked the boards looked fast just standing still they looked like you know little miniature rockets and the uh and the pattern of it was well done with the grip tape. Well, you like, know, the, 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 the caster surfboards was casters go faster. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Uh -huh. That's we true. Boing, we, wanted the to use the, uh, we wanted to use the surfboard logo on the skateboards, and he said, absolutely no way. He was adamant about it. And, yeah, that, that was more angular, like he's, Wally said. Now, and he came out with this, and he kind of fiddled with it. But he says, "No, that's only for the surfboards, and that's going to stay that way." You know, and then uh, Wally got the kind of the Chris Brown, you know, with the you know IPS <laughs> with him kind of staying the pool. And and I remember going to him with a graphic that was kind of you know of the time with a lot of art on it and everything else. And he goes, what is it a shit? He goes, I'm not putting any devil crap on any of my boards ever. And I just shut his down. Never asked him again. <laughs> yeah. So, hey guys, who came up with the idea to, uh, to put the layers of fiberglass in between the, uh, the laminate? The that, boy that was Bill. Bill, Bill. Bill was all instrumental and all that stuff. Bill, Trying to do this. Bill was, Bill was the one who who shaped and built all yeah, of those and, and gave them to Watson. Uh, um, like Bill, Bill definitely experiencing a poor signal. Exactly no, what he wanted to do. Like, I don't know. Well, not on your. So. so you guys used uh, like one or two plies less uh, when you put the fiberglass in it. I mean, they, I mean, they were super strong. They had a nice pop to them. We used thinner plies. Yep. And and. It started out with eight ounce glass, and by the time they were making the lighter ones and the lighter boards, this S cloth came out. It was like 3.75, and it was a lighter cloth, but it was just as strong as the eight ounce. And so it lightened up the boards, kind of gave them more boing. I just remember yep. Watson just bitching about he was itching all the time because when he was laying those boards up, he'd get the fiberglass in them when he cut, cut them. So he finally figured out to start learning some long shit. sleeves. Here's the phase three caster with the fiberglass layers that has five wood plies and two fiberglass plies. And it, and it definitely is thinner and lighter. Um, and of course, they had that legendary, that legendary give or boing that would made the caster a special board derived. Yeah, 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 that's a great it, question. It, it had, I um, two layers of fiberglass and two dark. layers of cross grain. So and and so and like I said, we I I cherry picked all the wood and and, and we we got to mill them a, a a lot thinner than than most of the other skateboards that yeah. were being made. So, well, you did good on them, Wally. You sure did. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it's it's, it's all Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like when they've been more, when they've been ridden. Here we go. Yeah, hey, I mean, look look at that one. That thing. Look how good a shape. How that board. Not from the look, look how good a shape it's still in. I, got, yeah, I think that's my old board right there that Tony's got. Yeah, because it's got my it's got my initial on it. Nice try, Tim. Oh, Tim, that's good, Tim. <laughs> Actually, I got this at uh, Permanent Wave Skateboard Park when they first started coming in. Um, Badass. See that that's there. one of the wide, that's the widest block tail. Yeah. yeah. Let's bring the block tail back, man. I'd say. Right? Bring it back. Yeah. Yeah, believe me, we're still working on it. You had to do the pizza grip. Yeah, yeah. Here's, your, here's your block tail, Chris, right there. And then yeah. Your, <laughs> and then right here's there. the original, original. The first, model. The first one. 
Yeah, we've been uh, we've been uh, working with uh, getting uh, some blocks here. They can hear me. And... This is first generation right here. Uh, yeah. That's with wings, wheels, Chris. They got it. Wow. Yeah. Wings. I had a set of those. And go wings. It was the first time I saw the wings wheels. Was one of the times when uh, when Chris and Wally came through Arizona, and they were just super fast. It's really yeah. bad. Yeah. That's it. That's your setup yeah. right there. That's fine. Hey, Chris, uh, congratulations, buddy, on the uh, induction into the Hall of Fame. I'm looking forward to coming out and see you get uh, this morning. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, congrats to you guys. That's fantastic. Same with Gibson. Yeah, hey, you bet. Hey, Wally. So, yeah. you remember late at night, you had the keys to the factory at Castor, the Watsons, and we used to go there. And you'd like all get into it and make all these custom boards for, for me and stuff and airbrush them and stuff. It was awesome, man. I remember that. But you like maybe, you had, I got a six ply board, six plies, right? With the fiberglass in it. And then you routed it out and everything. That's when I was riding in Upland for the gold cup there. It was so light. And I had tracker mags and the gyros were super heavy, right? But my board was light stuff. And then, I broke it in half because it was so thin and everything <laughs> later. But anyway, we also made the other board that I gave to Dan Murray Tommy. The uh, one you put the Gibson logo from the guitar on. The guitar logo. It was so rad. I wish I had that board back. Hey, you guys, I, I want to take this time right now to remember Bill. Bill, Bill was, feels like a, a second father to me, but... <laughs> I'm really excited to have his four kids with us here. So we have we have Heidi Caster and David Caster, Heather Caster, and Dan right. Caster. That's cool. Oh, so say, That's say awesome. hi and maybe talk a little bit about your dad and, and how you always saw him probably going off to work to make surfboards or skateboards. Or are they? All, all itchy. <laughs> so all that. That's so rad. It, yeah, I'll, I'll say uh, it's funny. I'm so stoked just to see all you guys on this call and hear some of the stories because I just remember as a, as a kid growing up going to the surf shop and Chris would pop in or Wally would pop in. There would always be a couple decks out front fully assembled for sale. And we always wanted to skateboard those guys boards at a uh, surf shop. The um, like surf shop? Uh, this uh, is a caster surf shop over uh, in Miramar. Caster. Wow. So right over the Miramar Road. And, um, but growing up, I always had a caster board, quite a few. Didn't know how lucky I was, but all my buddies would have a different model of some sort. And I remember, and Chris Strobel mentioned this about, you know, the graphics and like some devil stuff or skulls. And a few of my friends would have a Pal Peralta board, and I'd always want something like that. And it was, no, 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 no. And I remember, like, you can never have anything like that. So finally, it was actually after my dad passed away, maybe a, a, about a year, less than a year later, I somehow bought with my money a John Grigley shirt. And remember that logo? It's got like a cross on the forehead. And I brought it home. And it literally lasted about 10 seconds of walking through my door and was confiscated. And from then on, I was just like, okay, you know, I'll keep it clean and, and keep with the casters. But from then, I had the Caster Blaster board models that he kind of resurrected a little bit and had quite a few of those um, from skateboarding. You know, similar models that you guys showed on the call. Um, had my fair share of Chris Tropel boards. Never had an Inouye board up until it was the, the Caster Blaster model with the different logos, more the surf logo. But... You know, never was allowed to ditch school to go to Del Mar Skate Ranch like all my buddies. For those of you who knew my dad, I knew better. <laughs> that was not even close to an option. Um, so, had plenty of fun times at Del Mar Skate Ranch. And uh, just love seeing a lot of these different names on the calls who I know of, you know, and uh, never met. But uh, through my younger years of skating, pretty impressive. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, what about you, Heidi? I'm probably the uh, 
the least skateboarder of the four, I was, I did go to Del Mar Skate Ranch and I think I could only skate in that first bowl. <laughs> um, and I just, I have this like funny story of, um, of course we all had our caster boards and I was friends with um, Debbie Gordon and somehow ended up going to like the GNS shop and they grabbed my board and like put a bunch of like GNS stickers and all this stuff like on the bottom just to sort of like play a trick on my dad. <laughs> like I came home and it was just all decked out with GNS stuff, of course. He was friends with Larry, but it was just kind of funny. But um, I uh, have been texting uh, Heather and Dan before I knew David was on and it just, to echo Dave, it's so great to see all you guys and um, hear the stories and I was having a hard time holding it together. It's just for our dad to be gone as long as he has and to just have like all you guys still like love on him and want to talk about him and share the stories. It's really, really cool um, to me. And Legendary. Like, yeah, it's just, it's awesome. So thank you. Thank you. Your, your dad was legendary. Great guy. Totally. Yes, your dad changed my life, so thank you. Yeah. I think um, that, you have anything to say, Heather? Yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, growing up and first it was the surfboards and then he was like, all right, I'm going to get into skateboards. And I was just like, well, this is so cool. And then hearing your guys' names as just a kid and going to the Del Mar Skate Ranch and just also seeing how much our dad loved you guys too, you know, like you were at the, my impression was, is he was just like, oh yeah, the NOAs and Chris Strobel is like, you guys were, I don't want to like kids or like, he just really loved you. And I like, I think that's also why we idolized you also. Like, growing up. He was like a, uh, a second dad and, and literally, there was times when, you know, Wally and I were running around with some uh, uh, people in North County, and for some reason, he always knew. He knew everybody. And I remember going down and getting some boards, and he says, shut the door. Shut the door, and he goes, you're hanging out with the fucking Nectar guys, weren't you? I'm all, yeah, it's not a party. It's not those guys, you know? Mm. Oh, no. And he goes, you know how they funded all their shit, didn't you? And I'm all, well, no, it was a great party. <laughs> alluding to all the stuff that back in the day when the early with the early surfboard industry was funded you know with the brotherhood with curtis and all that they uh they were it wasn't legitimate means by any way <laughs> and so uh because you got to watch yourself you know and and I'm like wow i was like you know 17 and he's just you need to really watch yourself and the people you hang out with and and you know these these guys and if i hear you're hanging out with them again we're, we're gonna have another chat and, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we driving the, his know, kid chris <laughs> driving his kid the <laughs> lectures on not dating surfers that that i got for sure um your board is awesome by the way i had never seen that i don't know if dave or heather had seen it um but i've never seen your your uh, brick surfboard. It's really cool. I walked the actually brush it out. And, yeah. and there's oh, one I airbrushed it. I and hate there was it. a story behind that. Who, who airbrushed it? <clears throat> Myself and, and Paul Caster. Okay, so I have a good story about that board. Like that, that I, uh, Sonny Miller came by my house with his yeah. very first <laughs> water housing. He'd never had one before. He said, let's go. I want to try this thing out. We went to Swami's. And he had that board, uh, the brick bottom uh, airbus board. And I rode that out at Swami's and did a couple of turns in front of Sonny. And he shot some photos. So I actually do have those slides and the very first water shots that Sonny ever took on that board. Nice. Just saying. I have a story about that. I have a story about that surfboard. Chris <laughs> let me ride it. It's in Oceanside at Big Cassidy Street. I'm like, I don't know how to surf that good, but I'm like catching some waves. And I walk in all proud. I take that. He had just got that board. And I take it and I'm like, yeah. 
and I shoved him to the sand, nose first, and there was a rock there. Fully dunked it. Oh. <laughs> and I swear, Chris almost kicked my ass for that, man. God. So sorry, Chris. I hope it got fixed, man. <laughs> it's not like a it's not like a guy from SGV is really like into serving, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another story about that board too, because of the brick wall. We had it in the shop and they they put the brick wall on it, which took days. Wally says, I'll never do another one of those. Paul, you know, says that. So we everybody kept the airbrushing stuff on there and it was you know there was some stuff on there that was x-rayed way worse than it is now so we come in one day and billy goes hey come here what's on this board he goes my name's on that board that board you get you get, go get some sandpaper and sand all that shit off that board it is not going out there with all this crap on there you know and i mean that was it was x-rated if anything and so I had to go sand it off, and then we put some. We had to put some mellow it out a little bit, but uh, it was like no way. So in, in its current form, it's uh, it's 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 been reissued, and then the bottom of it. This was the best part. Where it's got the, it's got the that was Wally saying to knock out the brick and put the wave in it. They're like you look through a brick wall. So, so, so that board, all the little grout line is actually quarter, I had to take quarter inch masking tape and mask all around and, and cut all those little individual things before I could spray the thing red. And yeah, it, it took freaking hours to do. It's really, really <laughs> tedious to try to get it all straight and all that, but <laughs> it's, it's still around. Um, Kimball remembers all those parts because he had a bunch of casters. And, man, we were all living in Cardiff House. How many boards did we have, Kurt? Thirty boards there. Ooh. A lot, and I and but I really I just dreaded that brick board because you ran. We collided one day, and you broke the fit off my board on a really nice day. I was pissed. <laughs> 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 Yep. That house is part of the days. Running over a guy from Upland. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But, but you know that house in Cardiff was magical. We could surf. We could see the ocean. But the one thing I remember really well was we all got paid by the pictures we got in the mags, and we all had a pay scale. It's a thousand bucks for a cover, five hundred for a contents page, and down. What you got paid that much? Jeez. <laughs> cool. and, and and you got paid by each of your sponsors at the time. We all had several sponsors, and I remember when the magazines would come, we wouldn't get them any earlier than anybody else. They came in the mail, and I remember standing at the kitchen counter, Strope, you were on the cover, and while you got a ton of photos, and I got a contents page and a couple other photos, and I remember going like, yeah, I think we made, I want to say 7,000 bucks between the three of it. It was the Jesus. best money. In the 70s? It was, like, Party. It, it was the greatest. Well, if you... You get a cover, you get a thousand bucks, and you get it from a few different sponsors, you're on your way. But I just remember flipping through that magazine and every page being magical. And, and, and we're living in a house overlooking the ocean. You could see the waves, the telescope. We had a pool, we had a jacuzzi, we had this Curtis house right here. We lived downstairs. It was the greatest. That was, that was, for me, that was like the peak of my whole everything was right in the world, life right the world, there. Life, life right there. Thanks. This this, this house this right, house right here. here. Yeah. <laughs> that's Billy. That, that, that house was in Cardiff. It, it overlooked Cardiff Reef. So, so we had we had a black bottom pool, but but we never drained it. We had a hot tub, so you could yeah. sit in the hot tub and watch suck out to break. And we'd just go, okay, let's go. <laughs> it was awesome. Hey, we haven't yeah. heard from now, Dan or talk. Guys, have him say. Dan, you want to say something about your dad? Well, I, in well, full transparency, I think with all you guys on this, I, it wouldn't do anyone a service to me here or anything because I was so young and it's kind of my blind spot. I rather hear from you guys, but I do think it's pretty cool that 30, 40 plus years later, not knowing much about my dad in this era, that you guys all came together just to talk about it. And that speaks volumes and says a lot. So I'm all ears. Awesome. Hey, well, well, Gary asked this question. 
How in the hell did you guys end wind up at Cherry Hill Skate Park in New Jersey? Well, Gary, we, we were hanging out with Barry from SIO. It was myself and Stropo and Shogo um, and a few other guys. And, and we, had, we had heard that Cherry Hill had a grand opening the week before. And so we all piled in um, Barry's van and, and drove from Florida all the way up to New Jersey. It was really awesome because it was during the, the autumn. So we got to, it was the first time that I really saw all the different colors of, of the trees turning because mm -hmm. in California, you really don't have a season. <laughs> you have one season, seem like, right. or at least back then when we were kids. Um, and so that's how we ended up there. And we got there. And Steve, the owner, um, he actually put us up in the Hyatt, or the Hyatt, Hyatt or the Hilton, gave us the keys, and like, here you guys rock, stay here and rock well. So we were only going to go up there for like a couple of days. We ended up staying a week. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's how we it? ended up in Cherry Hill. Well, did Shogo oh, make that oh, trip oh, with you? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Did Shogo make that trip with you and Chris? Yeah. Shogo did make the trip, and then, and then he ended up, Flying back out later on and oh, ended yeah. up um, living, living there, there for right, a year. Yeah, he became the pro at Cherry Hill. Yeah, he became the pro at Cherry Hill Skate Park. Yeah. Yeah, you guys tore the place apart. You set the bar real high. Yeah. I just remember being there and, and driving up with Barry and I think I think they had to postpone the actual grand opening because we were like a few days late. We we got stuck at Florida State University with some party house or something, from what I remember, and then had a little uh, stopover in North Carolina, and and we were all like on leisure and like Barry's all we got to get going. These guys are going to have a thing, so we I think we had him call and they said, well, we can just do it next week, and so <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> So here's a, here's a trivia question. What does uh, Barry Short said he made? What does SIO stand for? Who we'll have to Anybody kill? Have to... Don't skateboard remember. Inside out. Yeah, skateboard inside out. <laughs> that was good. Uh, what do I win? <laughs> <laughs> Just a little trivia for you. A refill. Hey, well, well, I one other question that, that someone asked. Um, they want to know about my cross step. <laughs> uh. So um, cross step, you know, that, that, that all stems from surfing back back in the 50s and 60s, all the longboarders used, used to cross step or walk their board. Phil Edwards was, was really known for that. And so that's actually – Probably other than other than a kick turn or tic tac on on clay wheels, I think that was like the first trick trick that I learned how to do a cross step or how how to walk my board like skating the streets. And then when we start skating banks, I, I'd start cross stepping on banks and and then um, I said I think I could probably do this in a pool or on vertical. And of course, the first time you do it, you do it along the scum line and and then you kind of work your way up and um i got to be able to cross step and and grind two two wheel grind coping and so on and so forth someone someone just posted a shot earlier in this thing doing a front side one um those are freaking yeah. hard <laughs> I, I still haven't quite got that one which which one of you guys posted the front side cross step I don't think I've seen that picture. Was, was it the Grand Britain one? Was it the Grand Britain one? I know, it was pretty early on. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll try to find it. I think Ken posted it. I, someone just said that they, Gilmore, who was that? This one? There it is. Yeah, that's it. No, that, that, that's a backside one. Back side. Someone, someone oh. had a screen tie, a, a front tie one from, from the top. Of, Grant shot that one. Insane. Grant shot that. No, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> you get in a friendly way. All right. Yeah. Oh hell yeah. So. Yeah. Nice. 
Doug Martin. Wally, who designed the uh, stinger shape that your board was famous for uh, that's been influential since then? Uh, was that something you did, or did somebody else come up with that design? See, there, wow. there's the front there's side the... car with that one right there. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's hard. That's hard. I, I, I still try and do that, but can't quite get it. Uh, well, re really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the credit of the, the stinger to all, to all the surfboard shapers. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. That know, was the influence. I, I, I think Ben, Ben Ipa was, was one of the first ones to do the stinger back in the seventies. And, and so, um, nice. Um, and I and I kind of I kind of did it to kind of give skateboards a little bit more shape to, it, especially coming from a company that that made surfboards and, and back then it, it was all about surf skate. So I decided I wanted to do that that cut. And there's also a a, a little functionality to it because when when you do the stinger, the outline actually comes back out. So Back then, when we were doing high grinds, we kind of kept everything under the coping. Well, not like today, where, where they're doing um, stand up 50 50, you know, or 5 0 grinds along the top, you know, where they're, they're sitting on top of the coping. So for me, it, it was being able to push on your tail and just the rail line coming back out has a little bit of force to keep your feet on. Yeah, and you kind of reduce the mass of the board, so you have like, yeah. you know, plus, where plus your feet are. Gave, plus, it kind of gave you a, a spot where where you should be grabbing your board doing frontside errors. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Too many, too many these. people will design a stinger and put too much taper into the tail and make the tail too narrow, and you guys were able to, you know, you guys kept the fullness still in the tail even with the stinger cut in it. Now, as you're saying, Wally, to put your foot against, and it's uh, it's an endearing design. It is, you know. So. Hey, uh, I have a question for you, for Wally and Chris. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come in. Come in. Um, I'd like to know what the, what the connection was and how it happened that Chris and Wally were connected to Curtis and asked to design the Del Mar State oh. Ranch. And then also after that, because that's a, probably a huge story in itself. And also, how did you connect with Grant? And basically Grant was the first uh, employee. So how did all that go down? Because I don't know. Well, <laughs> I showed up uh, probably six months later and, and I don't even know this fucking story. And I was there for a year or so. <laughs> well, you know, well, what, uh, you know, yeah, well, Skate Park Montebello, um, yeah, thank you. Oh, the, the people around Skate Park Montebello was Curtis and Bobby Murphy, Conrad Miyoshi, Steve Schisser. They all, they all came up from San Diego to run Montebello. Yeah. So, and, and so I, I got a job at Montebello being Skate Patrol, making two ten an hour, John. Oh, <laughs> I remember. That's where I met you, actually. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and Brad Strandland was, he, he was a, my supervisor and he kept seeing this little blonde haired kid jumping the fence and, and skating. And so he put, he told me that I had to go kick the kid out. And so I, I go up to, to the kid and says, hey, dude, you, you can't be jumping the fence. Um, you know, you, you have you have to pay like everybody else, blah, blah, blah. And the words that came out of his mouth is, I got fooled. <laughs> and so I said, okay, I'll be right back. So, so I went to Brad and says, dude, the guy says he's got pools. He, he can skate. And so we let him in, and that, and that ended up being Stropel. <laughs> and so that, that's why they he, he took me to some pools, and I took him to some pools. But, but we really – from from there we we met Curtis and and Curtis was another like a second dad, and so I all I remember is um, we used to go down to San Diego and stay at his house over the weekend and and he 
tell us all the stories and, and take us surfing. And and he was the one who, who actually entered and and he hung out with John Breeden at the time and John Breeden was the airbrusher at Castor. Um and so that so that's how we uh learn learn um learn about Castor and, and got involved with the Castor. So it's Curtis Curtis Esso, we gotta give a shout out to him. You know, rest in peace and um uh, all that and and then Grant Grant was just my um next door neighbor. <laughs> That's yeah. how met Grant. Up on uh Manchester or what was the name of that street? Dublin. It was Dublin. That, Dublin, yeah. Dublin. Yeah. So. That's right. Okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, um Wally lived there and Ed Economy and Curtis. <laughs> Yeah. And that's where I, when I first met you, Grant, that's where I came. And then, yeah. didn't Jeff King live, live like on the other side or? No, Jeff King lived in the same house. He lived with me and then he lived in that house after, who moved out, Wally? Uh, who, who moved out? It was probably was it Ed. Who moved out first? It, it might have been Ed, yeah. 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 And, and Jeff, <laughs> like, Jeff used to grow so much weed that, when you were driving down the five, you could smell the weed from the freeway <laughs> on the other side. I totally remember that. Like you're driving down the freeway and you're like, did somebody just hit a fucking skunk? Because <laughs> it smells like skunk on the freeway. <laughs> just saying. Well, you know, you guys, Wally, Wally, you and, um, and Strope were the first pro skaters that I knew. Because I skated, but I was more into surfing, and then I started working at the skate park, and then, and then you asked me on my birthday. You came to my birthday party on Dublin Drive and asked me if I wanted to work at the uh, skate park, and so I started. I said this a few days ago on the other Zoom, and uh, I, uh, hi, and I. Uh, what was it? Uh... Oh, shit, I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just meeting those guys, because that was my question, was how did Grant, you know, this guy's such a dork, how did Grant get to, like, be the first employee at the skate park, basically? And that was it. was in charge of hiring, right? Yeah, be, be, because Grant had suckouts wired, yeah, and I wanted to learn how to surf suckouts like Grant can kneeboard suckouts. So that was my in with Grant. And I was a kneeboarder too when I moved to San Diego. And when I first Ooh, met Grant, I, oh no, sorry, man. I, but I will admit that now in front I gotta of everybody. Go. See ya. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. Uh, and Grant, and that's exactly what I did. I went out at suckouts with Grant. And was kneeboarding him. Yeah, sorry. I met I met Bill at the skate park, right? You just came by because you still lived up north, right? No, I I had moved to San Diego, oh, okay. but I was living down in uh, Manila Mesa, oh. and um, just heard I was skating at Oasis, and um, somebody said, "Yeah, they're building a skate park in Del Mar." So I rode my motorcycle up. To Del Mar and then rolled in and was like, well, shit, this thing looks rad. And we were still, they were still like <laughs> building it and pouring concrete and stuff. And, and you just were like, well, yeah, do you want a job? And I'm like, oh, well, because I worked at Skatopia. So you're like, oh, well, you're, you're a professional skate park guy, you know. I'm a, <laughs> I, uh, I was easily <laughs> impressed, Bill. <laughs> I know, because I was not impressive. But, um, that's how I got the job. Was like you hired me the same day, and then I, and then I, I came back. You. I didn't and I, hire you. Yeah, you did. I didn't have any power then. I think you. It was, well, it had to be either you or Jim Alisi, because yeah. Wayne didn't hire me. Yeah, Wayne hated me Jim the whole time. Jim Alisi was my boss. Oh, so Jim hired me. Yeah. That's what it was. But I told Jim to hire you. Yeah, you, that's you were a knee order, and I felt sorry for you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and Jim was like constantly stoned, so. He couldn't like actually hire people, <laughs> but uh, I have a good story about that too. So like my first week working at the Del Mar Scary Ranch, um, they were still like building it. People were whatever. There was guys. 
I think all the bowls were done, but they were still like pouring death and walkways and stuff. And uh, somebody would like grab me and said, okay, like we need you to wheel these wheelbarrows full of fucking concrete up to, to pour the decks between the, the half pipe and the, and the um, between the half pipe and the bank slalom. And I was doing that and one of them got away from me and I literally dumped an entire wheelbarrow full of concrete into the half pipe. And I remember thinking, fuck, I just like screwed the whole thing up. And the, the guy the that was there, the one of the construction guys was like, nah, dude, don't worry about it. You just got to hose and hose it all down the drain. And I was like, okay, well, that's that. I mean, I guess that's not a big deal. But for years after that, when it would rain really hard, that drain would back up all the time. <laughs> so that was me. That was me. <laughs> Whatever, fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, but but we were fortunate that um, I mean, we used to sit hours and hours and talk to crews about old designs or cool designs, and and so he he got the job being a consultant on Del Mar Skate Ranch. So that's when he involved us, and so that that's how we got to help design Del Mar. And we actually were in there also, Bill, digging. Digging the pipes out. Do you remember digging the half pipe out and having a, a rope on the wheelbarrow with two guys on the rope and one guy rolling it up to where you dropped in and, no. and we get you get like a foot to the top and the wheelbarrow would tip over and all the dirt will slide back down. <laughs> and you know what's rad, Wally, is that you and Chris, um, I I think maybe you correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys um, were adamant about doing a square pool. Because all the square pools that you guys and, and, and me skated, like in Arcadia, Monrovia, Duarte, all those, you know, Sierra Madre, there were so many square pools. And back then it was like, build a square pool? Like, who wants to do a square pool? But you guys made sure it happened, right? That, that was the it Sierra Bowl, it. wasn't it? I like that pool. That pool was rad. Yeah. It was. It was tough. That was the Sierra Bowl. Yeah. Uh, with, a, well, with a rounded fence, with a yeah. shallow end with, with no coping on it. Yeah, yeah. do lip slides. Lip slides was that your, shallow end. Chris, was that your, like, choice, or did you want to have well, a regular we, shallow end? We, 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 well, we each did a pool. It literally, and, and, you know, we talked to, like, all the Kona boys. We're like, we, we got to put a Kona bowl in here. Yeah. You know, we so cool. and, and Rodney and all that. We're like, well, what do these guys skate around here? And then, you know, VC, the reservoirs. We got to have a reservoir in this place, Yeah. you know? And, and so the reservoir design came in. And then the half pipe was like kind of Curtis's baby because he wanted to he wanted to design a no hang up lip. And so that's why it had the big rounded lip on it because you couldn't hang up on it. And especially when you're riding half inch riser pads and yeah. everything else that we were back then, <laughs> and, you know, 68 wheels or whatever. And then the square pool was mine. And then we had the egg bowl because we had all skated a really great egg bowl. But we said, no, nah, let's not put any coping on that one. But the Kona bowl and the, after the keyhole, which got the most use, and it was like kind of a training bowl, was an afterthought. It wasn't even originally in the, in the park plans. And there was some room left. And Curtis went to <laughs> Ms. Dunn and said, you know, she goes, oh, you want to build another pool? That's fine. Go ahead. And so the keyhole came in as an afterthought. Kind of crazy. But. Wow. So, oh, so yeah. Is that why the keyhole doesn't have a shallow end? Just kind of has yeah. an open, open end to it? Yeah. yeah. Well, Curtis and, wanted to make the ball so everybody could skate. And in every level of skater can open up and learn how to skate a ball in that pool, period. He did no drop in or anything else. And it made so much sense because it was so mellow to, to, to you know, drop in on it and get into the ball you know, and then get your speed up. And then when the, there was no deck on it for how long? There was a couple of years it didn't even have yeah, a deck. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what else is crazy is that um, that Kona Bowl was, I think, so as I, as I remember, as I remember it, was it was the it was. Um, second pool or bowl in a skate park ever to not have a roll-in. The first one was the little tiny thing at Skatopia, 
it had stairs in it and you just literally use the stairs to walk down but then the Kona Bowl at Del Mar had no roll in and I'm pretty sure every bowl in California and you you guys can correct me if I'm wrong because I probably am but every other bowl in uh, California or maybe even in the United States had a roll in except for the Kona Bowl yeah, that's true. Yeah. And Kyle skated. It's Kyle and Mitchell and those guys skated with Sonny and Rodney Jesse and, and Murray Estes and Gunner, especially Gunner. The, the old Kona Bowl was just yeah. out on yeah. Del yeah. Rio's Island. It was just, I, I skated that thing more Tatum. than the other bowls. Jeff Tatum. JT. Yeah, and, and in fact, JT. Jeff Tatum, uh, you know, everybody says like, he well he did he created the backside ollie and he did that backside ollie in that Kona bowl um and i remember watching him do the very first ones and he had a big ass tail block like like whatever two inches tall and this wide on his tail that he would push his back foot against um and he i mean he might say he did it at the real Kona bowl and i don't know i I skated that a couple times with him. I didn't really see that happen, but it probably it probably did. But he definitely did it at the Kona Kona Bowl at Del Mar, and um, <laughs> yeah, that that thing was that thing was rad. Like it had a really like I'm like right now that thing yeah. would be totally relevant. It was oh, a super it's tight so fun! I'd love to ride stuff. that thing right now. Yep. Well, Everybody the locals like weren't that. really too friendly though, Bill. Initially. Uh -huh. It was a tough, the locals at the Kona Bowl were not really the most friendly guys in the whole world either. And <laughs> yeah, no, like uh, JT and uh, Art Minigard and um, Rat, like, all, all those guys. Oh, that was Rat. Gunner yeah. was a pretty imposing, uh, Hauga was a pretty imposing figure too. And I mean, mm -hmm. they no didn't smile at you at all. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I tell them that all the time. I'm like, dude, the first time I met you, I was afraid of you. Because he's like, what is he? He's like six six or something. And but back then he was such a pussycat. I mean, I, I just didn't realize it. But whatever. Somebody just flush your toilet. Yeah. That's who posted up the uh, MPS board. How come I don't have one of those? I don't have one of those. I, I, I don't have one of those either. <laughs> kick down. Yeah. Got a couple gray ones kick left. Kick down, baby. Yeah, let's have one of those. Right. Come on. Hey, let's let's uh since you brought that MPS board up, we, let's <laughs> let's have Jeff say some some words. Um Jeff Jeff grew out in the middle of Montana. If you ever been out if you ever been out to Montana, he he has built some of the greatest skate parks out there now. Um and but he he's been a longtime caster fan. And maybe you could tell us some stories about back in the day, Jeff. Uh, well, um, 1979, um, I got my highest paying job that I'd had in my life at that point. And that was when I decided that I could afford a caster board because casters were five to eight bucks more than the regular board. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I remember there was a there was a contest in Helena, and I was super psyched. I had a brand new stropa board with one tracker mag and one regular six track, and <laughs> brand new bones cubics. And I showed up, and my my main competition, Mike Moraski, who a bunch of you guys have skated with, he showed up. He he just came back from skating the Hester series in Boulder. And he was like fully decked out and cat. He had like all of these stickers that I'd never seen before. And then he told me the story that Wally gave him a couple of boards and Goldwing gave him trucks and he was riding the wing single conicals. <laughs> and it sort of took the air out of like how psyched I was to have a, a caster board because my nemesis was sponsored by them sort of. <laughs> <laughs> That's my that's my caster story. Nice. <laughs> well, we also have another caster dude, Tony Hallam. Uh, Chris went to New Zealand back in '79, and and uh, and we we licensed the caster in New Zealand, and 
and and Tony was part of that. His dad. Uh, look at that. Hey Tony. Shot. Hey guys, how you going? Yeah, Tony. Great shot. I'm the hey, odd mate. accent out here. I'm a different accent here, but yeah, Chris. Chris came to New Zealand uh, in '79. It was really really cool for us because. Um, up until that point, and probably a lot of other, like, probably like Jeff's the same, where our magazines were always behind what was really going on. You know, we really didn't see what was going on for a long time. And when Chris, and when Chris turned up, it was crazy because we'd seen, we could see skateboarding um, as it was at that point in the world. And it was amazing to see Chris doing what he was doing. Um, and luckily, my, my dad um, was, was filming with Super 8 um, and he had his camera and he wasn't alone. Other people were doing it as well, but... Uh, he captured a lot of Super 8 footage of Chris, uh, some really good photographs. Um, and Chris was there to judge the, um, the 79 national title. Um, you were there for two weeks, weren't you, Chris? Yeah, uh, three weeks. Three weeks, okay. Um, and and most, most days, what I, I remember is Chris would turn up at the skate park and we were just there to watch him skate. And, you know, and we were blown away, man. It was incredible. Uh, it, it truly was, and, and to see this, and anyone else that you know, Gary's the same. Other guys that that, that saw these guys skate live, and anyone skate live was just incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it truly was, and and for the Caster family as well. Um, your dad, uh, you know, travel created a uh, for us a, a world in New Zealand where we had really quality skateboards to ride. Uh, the other skateboards at the time weren't that great. They're either homemade or made by the companies. But the caster skateboards, which I still have quite a few of them, they're, they're amazing, incredible, incredibly made. Uh, even under license, I'm sure his quality control was was even. Uh, he's on top of that. It, you know, so, so remotely back then, in '79, it was it was incredible. And also Chris and uh, Tex, congratulations for the Hall of Fame this year. That's going to be amazing. Um, yeah, well done, and Wally for uh, for the previous year. But yeah, excellent. Uh, but incredible, man. I tell you, that's, I don't want to go on about it, but it was for us, it was incredible to see Chris skate. And he was a really cool guy. He was able to hang out. He hung out with us. And, you know, I was only like a 12-year-old kid when he came out. And I remember him, um, you know, talking to me and um, just telling me stories. And, you know, even back then, I had plenty of questions for, you know, for, for Chris. So it was really cool. I was stoked to, to, to see him skate. And, you know, thanks, Chris. Yeah, yeah. The other part of that, too, was with Peter... Bronski, and I, I don't know if Peter's on this call. I I, I invited him. I invited him and Grant McCready. Wow. So Grant, Mc, so, so Grant McCready was uh, while he put the the Boeing thing up the other day on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, the guy riding is Grant McCready, and I, and I got to say, man, when he he won the national title, which Chris judged, um, when he left New Zealand, he wasn't a great skateboarder. When he came back from America, he won a trip to America. He was incredible around like the likes of Chris and Wally and whatever he saw there, man, it changed him into a different skateboarder. It truly did. Uh, Chris lived with me for six months. No, actually, uh, no, Grant did. And uh, he, he, he became a really good skater. We skated every day, all day. And we had Is that you, Bill? I can't, I've only on, a, on an That's iPhone here. Oh, sorry, Kurt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Peter lived with me for a while, and then Grant lived with me for about six months. But uh, yeah, he got uh, he got good fast. Yeah, yeah, Grant, he did. You know, Grant was he was absolutely broke. He had he just got around <laughs> he a round trip ticket to the states. That's all he had. So he just lived lived on our couch. But they lost well. his luggage at the airport, and so we went to L.A. We had to go to the New Zealand concert. And he put together a list of every expensive item you could ever own. <laughs> and so, uh, and, you know, video cameras, all kinds of stuff. And so they ended up paying twenty-five hundred bucks, and he just lived at my house till we had to kick him out. Then he moved over to your house, Chris. Then, so you guys probably had to send him back. But, but yeah, he did fast, and we had we had a lot of fun. Peter was an incredibly good skateboarder and a smart kid, also. Yeah, so, so, oh, sorry, Chris, you go. No, I said Peter, was, wasn't he the New Zealand like amateur surf champ? Yeah, so he, he represented, he represented probably a bit like Kevin Reed, right? He was a, an amazing skateboarder and an amazing surfer. And Chris, uh, sorry, um, Baronski was the same. And I, I said, uh, Chris was, uh, sorry, Peter was going to try and get on this today. Hopefully he's here. I'm not sure if he's or not, but um, it's, yeah, it was, he was amazing. Amazing, both skateboarder and uh, and in fact, if you read through the skateboarder magazine, uh, Steve Alba interview, um, Steve references 
Peter as the best overseas skateboarder he's ever seen. You know, I'm oh, sorry, one of the best skateboarders he's ever seen. And that's, that was one of those things where he, and he had to explain, he explained it. He said, I oh, never, he never bailed. He was committed. And that was the thing with Peter. He always just skated full on the whole time. And you know, hey, John, kind of like what you were saying about your mom putting on the airplane. I think he was six years when he showed up. And all he had was that ticket. And so he was just winging it. It's, you know, he stayed with me in my, at my parents' house for a while. And, and uh, just a good kid, easy to be with. And, and, and uh, just a real pleasure to have around. Hey, does anybody else have a I have a quick caster story. Um, I'd uh, never really rode casters or anything. And then Thrasher Magazine started up in San Francisco. And myself and another skater, Chris Cook, would always go with Kevin Thatcher, the editor, and take photos for the Product Patrol column, which was... Uh, about a half vertical page or a third vertical page with an action photo and then a description of the product. And we were skating the Berkeley pool, which was a diving pool. And Kevin brought a bunch of completes. And uh, one was a Chris Stropel caster. And that was the first time I rode Boeing, the Boeing board. And uh, wasn't really used to it, but I, it was really fun and I liked it a lot. Oh, ended up giving me that board and I wrote it for a little while and stuff until I moved on. But uh, I was able to get a caster board in, uh, it was fun, you know? Um, and it was really light and different and a very square edge on the wood. Uh, that was one thing that was different about the caster boards too, it was really sharp edge on the top and bottom versus more of a rounded edge on a lot of the other boards that were being made. Not not a really round, but just a little round on the top and stuff, you know. But uh, and board held together really well and stuff. So that's my sh my short little caster story. I've got one as well, real quick. Um, luckily, I was very lucky to get a. Um, Chris gave me one of his boards, um, a blue a blue wide caster that he um, he had when he was in New Zealand. I still have that, um, and I I rode that. I didn't write it to death because it wasn't possible because casters lasted forever. But I, I wrote it. <laughs> I wrote it for a long time and it was a really good board. Still have that one. So, um, yeah. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Chris, they're asking you about the alley-oop. Oh. Yeah, the alley when and where? I first did in, at the Seal Bowl in Sierra Madre, Arcadia. In That's when and you then, first uh, started them? Yes. It's, that's where I, I learned the motion. And then it, it transferred. And then when Del Mar got built, it was, uh -huh. that keyhole was just perfect to really perfect it and, and extend it and get air on it and everything else. It was just crazy. Um, I, I, I think the, you, you first learned it in the seal bowl. Yeah. That's it, right. In the seal bowl. Because that, that was a square pool. And, and you'd carve the corner and you came up and it was just a natural move. It was either do a front side grind or a set slide into the shallow end or pull off. And then I started just floating them backwards. It back. Yeah, it was just, it was kind of a natural move in a square pool, <laughs> especially that pool because it was so still, tight. Still to this day, one of the most insane moves I've ever seen. Your backside alley oops out of Cherry Hill head high, up, drift back, and down. Insane. The other part of it too was just that it was such a weightless move. I mean, backside air was good and frontside air, but something about an alley oop that really made you, uh, it, you just felt like you were really floating. I don't see anyone doing it today. Uh, like yeah, they days. still do they them. Do them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do them all the time. <laughs> Is that right? He was. Yeah. Capable. Yeah. Of yeah, it's a kick-ass move. I'll never forget it. Ever, never. Yep. You you hear it all the time on everything: surfing, snowboarding, still skateboarding. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah it still it still happens. It still happens a lot. I better start paying attention more. <laughs> <laughs>
Who shot that sequence, Chris? Casmus well, at Del Mar? Uh, Casmus did. Yeah. And, and, and the other, you know, and I, I stole the name from Chick Hearn because the alley-oop was a, a Laker move. And, and, you know, it was an alley-oop from Goodrich to, to uh, Chamberlain or Jerry West to uh, Wilt Chamberlain or Elgin Baylor. Especially yeah. Baylor. That's when I was a kid, so I was listening to him. Like, Man, this thing is just—it's a floating move, and that—that that, you just float it. And I was like, "It's gotta be an alley oop." Whose dog is that? <laughs> <laughs> Mute the dog. Yeah, I—I I, I don't know if everybody Shit, knows that Stropel is also the one who first did a rock and roll board slide. Also. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. Really. So. And was that at Del Mar, Chris, where you developed that? Yeah. I saw, I, we went to Winchester and we just came there and I saw Martin do the first, you know, basic, basic rock and roll. And I was like, man, what a cool move. And, and learned just to do that pretty much took a day. And then I was like, man, you know what? If, if you start carving, it's like, we could slide on. And this was before the deck at Del Mar. So, you, and, and I never used rails either. So, at first, we'd start and got a little bit and carve half a, you know, get a half a coping. And then pretty soon, Wally and I started winding up on it, you know, the oh, full carve and see how many coping blocks we could go. And, and you could just, I, I should have done them with rails, but I was just kind of anti rails. So I just, it was just something about grinding on the wood across the coping. But it, uh, kind of a little twist on what Martine did. That's rad. It is rad. So yeah. good. Totally. Fuck rails. <laughs> <laughs> Easy spat <spot> dollar. <laughs> hey, Wally. I've got a quick one. Um, how did you end up coming to New Zealand? Like, what was the, the, um, the reason for that? Was, did Bill Castor organize that or did Phil Coggan organize that? Sorry, Pete Coggan. I, 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 ne I, never, I never got to get... I, I, I don't know. Whoever oh, put the New Zealand question. trip together... I, I didn't get to go. They they pulled me off in the la, in the eleventh hour. So Stropel. Well, was Wally, Wally Wally was gonna go, and then he completely torched his. He had some sort of injury. That too. <laughs> Chris, I was supposed to go there too and live there and work at the factory, and then I hurt my knee. And then and you um, stopped skateboarding at that time. Right, right around that same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when I got that centerfold too, and I remember Chris bringing it over the magazine to my house. Like, Check this magazine out. I'm like, look at. Damn me. it! I should have been there. It should have been me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola sponsored the New Zealand national championships, and so yep. they were instrumental as far as having the you know the wherewithal to, for, to pay for the trip. And I mean. I, it was crazy. It was, it was, I was on the equivalent of the New Zealand Johnny Carson show. I did all these shoot. I was, I still have the, the, the New Zealand national paper that I'm on the front cover of. I did radio spots to promote the, uh, the contest. And, uh, they were, it was odd. It was a rock and roll station, one ZFM or whatever it was. And it was, all of a sudden, you hear this, Duh, come down to the thing, and everybody's talking like a, like a Kiwi, and then it was like so pronounced. You know, this guy speaking so casually. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, the stage was one ZM. So you're pretty close yep. here. That's one funny. ZFM. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I have a caster board story, but um, also. Uh, I think I met you at the Seal Bowl, right, Chris? Yep. Yep. I think that was the first time I met you. But, anyways, um, when you guys uh, lived at the in the apartment in Oceanside, you and Wally both, I think, right? Like you guys both lived there. Uh, um, I was living with a guy named John Downer. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> and um. I was there that day when you received like your first box of the the Stropel models that had the routered uh, bottoms, and the one that you were riding was like a hand routered prototype, and um, you handed that to me and said, "Here, take this," and and I I don't know I think I wrote it 
a, a couple times. It kind of sucked, so I didn't really write it that much. <laughs> but um, I um, I ended up. Uh, but uh, out of all the boards that went through my hands, because, you know, working at skate parks, it's like, you're just like, get a new board, try it, give it to somebody else. Um, I held on to that thing. And then uh, eventually I ended up giving that to Dave Swift. So Dave Swift has that deck. Uh, I don't know where, like, uh, when I gave it to him, uh, him and Grant had their um, office in Solana Beach. But uh, that Dave Swift has that deck. Just so you know, oh, okay. prototype routed routed bottom Chris Tropel deck. Is Dave Swift got it? Right. <laughs> so, not uh, not Chris, many people have up the routed bottoms. That's for sure. So, and I have a good Wally uh, Wally deck for too. Or story, sorry, because uh, Wally, you gave me a deck. And I mean, I'm thinking it was, it was pretty, it was at Del Mar and it was probably 78 or nine. And it was, you know, your stinger model thing, white bottom board. I don't even think it had wheel wells, but um, I've told you, I've told you this story, but I'll share it with everybody else. Yeah. It's funny because I, I don't, don't even know why I held on to that, to be honest, because back then, you know, who knew, like, right? Like, you you get a skateboard and, like, oh, this is going to be worth some money someday. No, you didn't think like that at all. I mean, but anyways, I held on to that thing, that caster board for a long time. And then at one point, uh, my nephew, who lives in Long Beach, this is like 15 years ago, probably, um, he was getting into skateboarding. And he like, you know, he calls me up, Uncle Bill, like, do you have a skateboard? I'm like, yeah, I got this one, you know, I'll give this one to you. You can ride this. So I gave it to him. And then it's probably like 20 years ago, actually. Anyways, so I gave it to him. And then I think he rode it for a while. And then at one point, like in the early 90s, when all these skateboards were like, you know, becoming like worth so much money on eBay, you know, and I... Uh, and I saw, like, you know, people are selling skateboards for what? Like $1,000 and shit or more. Um, I uh, reached out to him. I'm like, do you have that skateboard? And um, he's like, what do you mean? The one I gave you. Oh, well, Whoa. we cut it in half oh. and used it as tombstones <laughs> in the My yard goodness. for uh, thank, uh, for Halloween. Like, he cut it in half and used it, <laughs> stuck him in the yard what? as tombstones. <laughs> I was like, dude, you probably could have sold that thing for like, uh, who knows, you know, 3,000 bucks. I don't know. Put a down payment on a car. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Tex, you there? No, he checked out a while ago. Oh, he did? I oh. think so. Okay. Come in, John it Gibson. It's all about him. Maybe Wally could uh, answer this. That photo that I put up today of John on that Gibson board. Is that a caster? The Ollie? Yeah. With the Gibson logo on it? Like a Gibson guitar logo on it, I think? Um, I can't, let, let me, let me take a look. I can't remember. I remember, I remember seeing it. Um, I think Cam's Tex, got Tex it. Tex is with us. He's watching right now. Unmute yourself, Tex. Tex, you're muted right now. Hold on. Can you hear me know. now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we I were about to come out with a, with a gift. Oh, yeah. Morning. Morning. Is everything all right now? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think that's, the, I think that's the, the board that John's talking about um, that we went in the shop and routed out and painted. Oh. And so that it's, it's technically my shape, but, but then we airbrushed Gibson on it for oh. him is what we did. And we routed it out. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, we routed it out. I rode that board forever. And then Dan Murray Kami wanted it. And I gave it to him after I rode it. And I would like it back. It would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a tombstone. Yeah, it's a, to it's a tombstone in somebody's yard. You can keep it then. <laughs> hey, well, well. Gary asked if Cass was still making skateboards, and um, we are not. Um, we, we've always tried to, to get some casters made, but, 
you know, when we want to do it, we want to do it the way we did it back then with fiberglass and resin and yep. all that. And right. We just can't find anybody that's willing to put out the money to do that or, you know, or, or have it done in their, in their shop or, or so on. So, mm -hmm. um, it's still kind of a project that Chris and I, um, always try and figure out how we can do it. And, um, but no, they're not. Not right <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Stay tuned. You know. What was the difference in pressing the boards when you had the, uh, the fiberglass in there as, as opposed to just gluing up the laminates? Well, I think I think what you know what, what when you glue up with regular glue you don't you don't have to um, put them under heat pressure with with epoxy epoxy it it takes so much longer for it to cure by itself but so we would put them in a press and then we would throw them in a, an oven for at what was what was the oven set at 175 degrees and and we would bake them for two hours and that would really set the epoxy off. Wow. Wally, the closest you could find today was Pool King did a board. I was involved in that project, the Down South Skates board that was a fiber lamp. So it was wood with the, with the fiberglass. It had some of the spring and boing of the original caster style, but they can't even get that material anymore either. But that was kind of the most modern day equivalent um, that we could find to the caster wood fiberglass layup. Right, and I and I think you know the with the fiber lamp that that that's a pre preg uh, material, so that you know that that they use more in the uh, aerospace industry. Uh, but even even that, it was just that pre preg, but it, it it still used white glue in between all the other layers. And so, as to our caster was epoxy resin through every right. single every single. Because nobody's making boards that way anymore, including Watson. You know the the. But the, uh, that was the closest thing we could come up with a number of years back to try to make a lighter, wider pig style board, you know, that would uh, that have some of the boing that the casters had originally. Hey, Wally. Yes. I have a story about this board. First off, a question. Did you, did you make this board, do you think? <laughs> Wow. I don't know. I don't think so. It looks okay. the bootleg. So what happened is uh, the, the last day of Skatopia, the day that they were going to close, they didn't tell us workers. And uh, I just showed up for my shift and they said, uh, everybody looked really bummed out. And I thought it was just an, another day. And I said, what's going on? I said, well, they're closing Skatopia. And uh, so they said, if you want, you can take something. You could take one thing, you know, so this is what I do. <laughs> That's what you talk? I, it's a I, wall, I don't, I don't wall remember producing those, but... Hey, I'd like have. to say something. Can I say something? Hey, guys. Hey, just want to say that I started Skater Built and tried to make high-quality skateboards because of caster skateboards. They were the highest-quality skateboards ever made. Ever made. Just want to let you guys know that. They are. Here, Bill, were great decks. Great decks. Thanks, Dave. Uh, so right just, want, just want to let you guys know that those skateboards, even Jay Smith says his Powell boards came out of that caster. His last ones he had came out of that, that plant that your boards came out of, that same right. factory. He said those were the best boards of all time. And they felt just like your boards did, Chris and Wally. They felt just like your guys' boards. Real thin, real fiberglass in the layers. Sick. So I just want to let you guys know those boards were a big influence uh, and let the caster family know that those boards were a big influence in, in the quality of skateboards, how they came and how they became uh, with, with bottom layers and, and different uh, fiberglass and different product used in the, in the laminating process. Oh. And, and it, it was the same for the surfboards as well. It was, you were so yeah. proud to walk down the beach with a caster board. Oh, I heck yeah. He looked at it and just went, yeah, perfect. It was just and he was, he was so incredibly anal about the, the construction of both the skateboards and the surfboards. 
Wally worked for him. Uh, I rubbed out boards for him. And, and literally, when he put us to work in the factory, and he'd come in, and you know, you could go to any shop, and after you rub them out, there'd be blams or whatever. Somebody just, you know, totally, he'd come back in, and he'd go through that board. And I mean, it better be perfect. Otherwise, he wouldn't pay me for it. He'd have Stan re-glass it, and I had to rub it out again for free. And he don't <laughs> screw it up. <laughs> Heather and I should have to tell you how we had to clean the toilets. <laughs> a toothbrush, and we had to unscrew the whole toilet seat because we had um, a baby or a younger brother and soak that in bleach in the bathtub while you're scrubbing all the pee off, and then the toilet seat was soaking in bleach in the bathtub. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> that, was really good that was a really good I'm egg. Sorry. Perfection. We have a win. <laughs> you totally win. Eight totally. years old. He did have the cleanest bathroom in all of any surf shop in California. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Hallam, I think I was on mute before, but. Here's caster stickers from the with the down under colors that were done for uh, New Zealand, from what I understand. Nice. This one, and this one that we put on the caster board. So this ones were from uh, New Zealand. Hang on, who's that? Who's that? Is that you again? Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. So that one, that's for you. <laughs> hey, Wally. Yeah. Thank you. Wally, neighbor Ed says hi. Ed. Hi. Yeah, and also neighbor Ed claims that every single grip tape job that came out of there was done custom by you, but with and you did it all by hand. Is that true? The first one. The, the first ones were until we found someone who could die cut them. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I worked on. A lot of a lot of parts of, of the caster boards from from laying them up to helping paint them, to help them silk screen them, cut the grip tape, place the grip tape. I, I, did, I did a lot of that work. So um, so when you bought a caster like my model, you, you I did a lot of the work on it. That's so, so rad. That's awesome. As well, you know, I I, I learned. Bill, Bill Bill took me under. My his wing and taught me how to how to build support. So, um, I airbrushed at caster and I fit and hot coated at caster. Um, nice. Yeah, and, and and he and he was picky back then. You know, we would glass all the fins on, and if there's a little air bubble in that glass, he'd make you take razor blade, cut it out, and fill it up, and yeah. <laughs> and so, so yeah, brutal. He, he was definitely quality <laughs> control. So, Chris, I've got a question real quick. I, I remember seeing a picture of um, Jay Adams riding a caster at one point. Yeah. Oh, yes. that. oh that's a secret photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one? Question. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Yeah. That one. Nice. I guess the secret is out, Chris. Chris. <laughs> hey, I remember seeing he was riding caster board, and we were at Marina, you know, Marina Del Rey, and he dropped in on that CS model and broke both trucks off. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't break the board, though. <laughs> no, he didn't break the board. He broke both trucks. I've never seen board. That was like both trucks. That's the board. You know, Jay approached Chris and I. And at the time, he, he was having problems with, with Z-Flex, and, and he wanted to come and, and bail and, and ride casters. So, in fact, some, some of the early ads in caster might have said, coming soon, Jay Adams' model. So, um, he was going to ride for us, and then Z-Flex the drug test. Up and <laughs> <laughs> well, he loved surf. He, he loved caster surfboards. So he, he, this whole surfing element was right down Jay's road too, because he just loved to surf as much as he, he probably liked he to surf. Ripped. More than he yeah. Hey. And so he, he, you know, he Wally says, "Yeah, oh, we get a couple surfboards a year. You do the shit." He was right on it. He, you know, and he'd come down yeah. and, and and stay. 
in, in, in our house, you know, and sleep on our couch for like weeks, and he'd just hide out. And so this was in the couch when we threw it away, which is his state ID from Hawaii. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, so, That's awesome. And he was, it was just low key when he was hanging out in North County. It was just down low J. He just wanted to go surf. And we take him to the park to go skate a little bit, but he always wanted to go, let's go, let's go back and surf. <laughs> That's right. He's, he was a ripper. Yeah, he, he was. was. Yeah. Hey, Strobes, I got a good one for you. I was over at Ed's house the other day. Can you hear me okay? Hopefully you can. Yeah. And uh, back in the day when we were kids, man, and we were looking at the magazines like I still do, we were looking at the trucks on your boards and those magazines, and you had those – you had those extenders on your X tracks on your caster boards, yeah. and uh, it made them as uh -huh. wide as like a, pros. And they were like a, they were like as <laughs> wide as a six track. And so, anyways, I was at Ed's house the other day, and I, I, he showed me those trucks with the big extenders on them. They're like mid tracks or half tracks or something, but they got huge extenders on each side, and they rattle and everything. I'm like, whoa, and Chris, that's the ones that were in the ad. <laughs> He's got them, man. Unbelievable. Did they rattle when you rode them and shit? Were your, was your board loud? No, no, they tightened up. You used to have to put the axle in them all the time because the axle would bend. But I actually mm -hmm. rode those at, at Winchester in the contest. And and there's a picture of me doing some backside air in there. But those we used half tracks because they have the best turning radius of any track or trucks. I mean, a full track, <laughs> yeah. turn. they yeah. just didn't. And so right. we said, oh, now we got to use the half track because it has a pivot angle. It was right or the better yeah. one. So yep. we had freaking eight inch axles into those bad boys. And how are we going to make it? <laughs> At first, it were just the axles. And so it, we found that somebody that made some extenders out of uh, aluminum for us put on there. So they came out with the real ones. Hey, what about he the says tropical socks? The socks that you always wore. I always copied it, man. I loved it. <laughs> the stroke of socks. Well, I had to be on the cutting edge of skate fashion, man. Come on. <laughs> TNC yeah. shorts. I never forget socks. when you cut my hair and you put me in khakis and dressed me all jazzed up and I went back home to Pasadena. It was nice. I got a bunch of chicks from that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaned your ass up. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Well, you've talked to Elmar a lot, Chris. There's some great shots of you on, that were taken at Surf to Earth, both for the uh, Gullwing and Wings ads, and uh, just some, some uh, wonderful shots of you at Surf to Earth and Vista. And Goodrich took most of those shots. Jim did. He did. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and that was awesome. like one day, right? Like one session, probably. I, I skated there a lot with Kimball, with Kurt yeah. skated a lot, too. Ah. That, that bull, there was one wall on that bull that was just absolutely atrocious. It wasn't the best bull by any means. And so it was, uh, it was a, little, a little warped in some areas. But it was, yeah. it was fun while it lasted. It wasn't there too long, though. No. Nope. Like a year and a half, I think. I don't know. Hey, Wally. Yeah. You got that uh, Sims uh, poster behind you. You, you were telling me the story about why you left Sims and went to Caster. Can you touch on that? <laughs> yeah. I think oh, I know the story. No, it wasn't for the money. Well, <laughs> 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 bailed first to go to Caster. Um, and if, if you see well, the end of my, my Sims um, years, you always saw a caster surfboard sticker on, on my boards. <clears throat> and, and at the time, Sim, Sims grew pretty big the year that I skated with him. So when, when my contract came up, um, I had to sit in front of a board of directors versus just him. And mm. so they, they just – and I wanted more money, obviously. And, and, and the board of directors go, well, why should we pay you X amount of dollars? Well, we can get 15 grams and get that. And, and I, well, you know, I know how to talk to the kids. I know how to talk to the parents and so on and so forth. I, I know my worth. And 
And then Stropel, Stropel mm -hmm. came to me and said, hey, I, I think you, you should make the move to Caster. And he's willing to give you six surf boards a year. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that, um, and then, and then, you know, Sims never came out with my model. And so I bailed and went to Caster. And at the same time, I, I, I moved from LA to San Diego anyway. So. All right. Yeah, that became the Sims hardcore, move. didn't it? What was that? That became the Sims hardcore model that with the colored plies that it was supposed to be your model, from what I understand. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, the, the first one was, was the <laughs> that I did, you know, and, and then, and then the, and then the second, second one, you know, I, I've been airbrushing a little bit for caster and I said, you know, maybe we should paint our boards. And so, so the next, and, that, and that's where the whiteboard came about. And I, I, I believe Caster, we were the first ones to kind of do shape boards. And I believe we were the first ones to do painted boards also. Well, Sim, Sim started to, uh, his quality started to wane as it got bigger and stuff started going offshore. And, and you know, you get up there and I mean, he made a prototype for me and, and, and Jeff can abide by this. It's broken in half. And I went in there and he goes, well, what's wrong with it? He misspelled my name on it. And I put my foot right through the board. <laughs> There's no freaking way. And he goes, well, you signed a contract. And I'm like, yeah, Tom, but I was 17. I can't legally sign a contract. And so he was bent when I split. And that, <laughs> he's still and he well, was all, he had no clue. He was so bent on count. He goes, and it, it, it was like the little company that could. Gordon and Smith. Gordon was extremely bummed out at Caster because he wanted Watson to make GNS boards and Watson wouldn't make them because Billy had an exclusive with him. And, and then not until afterwards did he start making GNS boards and other boards, literally. Oh. Mm. So Taylor Dyke had made all the GNS stuff and that, which was, well, they made okay boards, but nothing like Watson was part of that. Right. Yeah. You know, plus, plus when I wrote for Sims, uh, board construction was changing every 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 week. So Sims would have me come up and, and give me a deck, and I'd take it back and skate it and, and go back. Do this is it? Let 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 screen our my name on it and put it on the market. No, no, you gotta try this board. So it just kept going round and round. Um, there there are there are a couple of of Sims Tom Inouye models out there. Um, oh. Oh. Those are golden, I bet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Barfoot ran the silkscreen operation for Sims, and, and I and I talked Chuck into burning a Tom Inouye model screen and screen a, and screen a couple of boards and a couple of t-shirts. Um, and he said he would only do two, maybe three. So there's three of those boards out there. Wow. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're some choke. <laughs> there isn't Billy power. Jack has one of his collection. I wonder if they still exist, man. That would be awesome. <laughs> hey, Stropel, I have a question for you. I want to see, give us the story behind this photo. Yeah. The first, the first Thrasher cover photo. How did this, wow. how did this happen with Kevin Thatcher? Well, as you know, the whole down south NorCal thing was a little heated back then, huh, Bryce? Yep. And, uh, yeah. and it's funny, Captain Thatcher came down, and, you know, I, you know, I'd spent some time up there with him and cruised around San Francisco, and I said, when you come down, let me know. I'll take you to all the pools, you know. He's, so I got a call one day, and he goes, and, and so I take him to that pool, and that pool's right be, right across the street from Pasadena City College. And a, and a buddy I went to school, high school with, was living in it. And uh, Freddie, and he's a bass player, he's a great guy. So Freddie says, nobody can skate it but you, Strope. And so I took KT, and it was just a great keyhole. I hey, mean, I was, was there, too. I know. <laughs> I skated that pool, too. It's a fun photo pool. of me in there. There's a couple of them you in there ripping the damn thing. And, and yeah, because I remember we were at the Upland Gold Cup, man, and those guys come walking up, Thatcher, and then. There's an about indie sticker, the What's going on here? 
Yeah. Uh, independent trucks. There was right? a, yeah. There was a, yeah. That's yeah. another story. You know, I know the story. Yeah, never, yeah Bryce. I never, I never I know the story. What's the story? Let's hear it. Let's hear it, baby. Come on. No, awesome. All right. When I first came out to California, he got me on Tracker, right? So I'm riding Tracker, <laughs> doing the whole Gold Cup series. And then I guess Chris had a falling out with Tracker. He's like, hey, you need to ride independent. I'm like, hey, what are you talking about? They're taking care of me. They're paying entry fee and stuff. It's cool and everything. And then here comes Thatcher and Fosto from Indy. And they, Chris goes to Indy, and he wants me to ride Indy. And I'm like, no, I'm going to still ride Tracker. And then they take us to that pool. And if you look, uh, open up that magazine, there's a picture of me. And you look who took the picture. Fosco took the picture. It wasn't Thatcher or anything. So it's like all mixed. It's a mixed thing. Right, Chris? Is that how it happened? Well, it, it, it's funny. And I never thought about this. Well, why would I get that? I was they put you. That's why they put you on the cover. Yeah. The front Tracker, you went to Indy. <laughs> Tracker and Indy were such rights. That, yeah, it was a big <laughs> fight, you know, rival. Grosso came to me with this theory that he goes, listen, you know why you got that cover? Because they wanted to fuck, tell Tracker to fuck off and put it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, here, here you go. And, and it did. That it, was. Allman uh -huh. and, and Dom, and they were not happy boys after that. It didn't matter. Yeah. Oh, what yeah. happened, testing the, the, the indies, I always had indies. Fausto was giving them to me, and I always had a board set up with Indies because they turned. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I kept telling those guys, you got to change the pivot angle on your <laughs> truck to make these things turn. And so yeah. one day, Lance, I think it was Lance Smith, was at Del Mar, and I'm down there riding a board with Indies on it. So what, what are you doing? I'm all, yeah. I got, <laughs> I, got, Dang, I, got, man. I still have the Dear John letter from Dave Domney firing me. Oh, nice. <laughs> you should print that and do something. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, awesome. I'll dig it out and put it up. But yeah, it's hilarious. I was like, wow, oh, shit, that was, shit, he, he's going to pay me and give me trucks. I'm good with all this. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. That's great. That's uh, epic. Man. I'll never forget that day. That pool was yeah. so gnarly. It wasn't gnarly. It was just, there was no shallow end. It was like, Two pushes and, and you're in and the bowl. Text the photo credits right there. It says Fausto. Yeah, he took the photo. Can you believe <laughs> that? I didn't know you had took pictures, man. Hey, it's not hard shooting photos. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I can do it. That's why it's so Anybody crazy, can. man. It's like Fausto took that picture. Wow. Fausto did it all. Yeah, he could do he it did. all. <laughs> you know, that's when they were brand new. They can't. I remember they came to Upland. And they're all like, we're starting a magazine. Dwayne said to call it Thrasher. And like, look, and Shope was like, oh, just come to this pool. And you drag me there, we go to the pool. You know, Pasadena, California, a guy from Pasadena, Texas. Here I am, skating in Pasadena, California. It's awesome. <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> That's fucking rad. Yeah, it was badass, man. It was really cool. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you know, Roko and I used to go out to Arizona quite often and skate, and so I want to hear some Arizona stories from Tim there, because he's got a bunch of casters on that wall there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately, yeah, uh, hear the hear reproductions are not real casters. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, having you guys come out was was awesome. I don't know what it was about all the guys from the Badlands, but between. Wally and Chris and uh, Kirk Cordham came out a few times. I've got some old pictures of him. Uh, Tay Hunt, all those guys, they all had a similar style. I guess it's because they all rode it up one. But uh, and it, those guys would get out. Tay Hunt and Chris Stroper were the only two people that I saw take the single sections that are on the poster behind me and actually make them rock back and forth a couple inches as they were sitting out uh, on the flat areas getting ready to go down the lines. And uh, – we just had we had some awesome times just watching you guys skate those things, man. We learned so much and just how to do the set slides and just what we called the taste slide, which was going up way over vert and just side sliding back down uh, backside 
and coming back out of it. But, uh, yeah. They were uh, they were awesome times. And uh, what do you guys? What was the first time that you guys, uh, Wally and Chris, that you guys made it to Arizona? I remember Kyle came out there one time uh, as well, along with Brad Strenland. Brad was trying to hook up with my sister one time when he was out there. <laughs> <laughs> How come Brad's not on here, man? Where is he? But the, the, the first time I went to Arizona, uh, Warren ha had got a letter from a guy with pictures of the fight. And so he he invited to come out there. So it was uh, myself, Stacy Peralta, Waldo Autry, Laura Thorne, Thornhill, Tom Stewart. Um, and so we all, all we remember is we, we flew into Phoenix and, and we were meeting this, this guy there with a fair faucet t-shirt. We we're starting to drive out to the middle of the desert and out from on the horizon, you can kind of see these round little tubes. Oh, look, there they are. As you got closer and closer, there were, I mean, there are thousands of pipes out there in that yard and they're huge. Um, so that that's when I first went out there, and um, and then I we told Stropo about them, and and then we start going out there a lot after that. That's yeah. so cool. Hey, hey Wally, did they try to keep you from skating those pipes? Was there was there interference or such, or were they just wide open where you could ride them? No, they were kind of a bust. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's just, what I thought. You had to sneak in. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it, dep okay. it depended on where they were. The, the deal with the pipes was that they were for the Central Arizona project. They were bringing water in from the Colorado River and right. through a series of canals and the pipes. They were bringing it into Phoenix, and then part of it went out to Tucson from there. And what they did is they, they had those for the downhill sections. There were pumping stations to pump it up, and then the canals would go down for a while. And if you had a steep downhill section, then they would have the pipes to, to run the water down from there. But they, they moved constantly. The, the lines were usually, you know, several hundred feet long, you know, maybe a quarter mile long, but that was about it. Once they built that section, then they would move the entire plant 40 miles to somewhere else, and they would set it up again, and they'd produce them. The place where I think Wally was talking about, where there was just tons of pipes and where it was a bus, was at the Elon Highway, which is kind of out on the, uh, the east side of Phoenix, where I live. So... When they were way out in the desert, out near uh, Lake Pleasant and some other places, actually, you know, they were 45 minutes outside of town. They were nowhere close to civilization at all. At one time, we went out to, uh, to go ride the pipes. There's a whole big crew of us, my buddy Tony Hernandez and a bunch of other guys. We're out riding the pipes where they had single sections sitting up top, and then they had a line put together. It was uh, probably a quarter mile long. So we had took most of the vehicles, we pulled them down in the ditch where they were laying the pipes. And we were out there skating all day, and then we were up at the single sections and come to find out, hey, man, there's a platform left over here. It's like, there's a what? There's not any keys in it, is there? It's like, hell yeah, there's keys in it, dude. <laughs> okay. So I get in, the, get in the platform lift, drive it over the next to one of the single sections, back it up about halfway, and I'm taking pictures of my buddies. And all of a sudden, the superintendent for the construction site shows up on a little mini bike. I was like, oh, shit. Game. Talking to my buddy, uh, Ron Theobald, the you know, super nice guy. He could, he could talk to anybody in anything. You know, the silver tongue. I said, all right, Ron, you're going to talk for us. Everybody shut the hell up. Don't piss this guy off. Or we're going to get in big trouble and you know, we'll get Ron off. So Ron goes over and talks to him a little bit. He's cutting up with him. And, of course, you know, we're – out there for almost for the weekend. This is like on a Saturday. Everybody's got coolers full of beer. And uh, so we're talking to the guy, and yeah, it's going along pretty well. I was like, hey, man, you want a cold beer? The guy's like, hell yeah. <laughs> and we give him a beer, and by the end of the day, man, he took us, loaded us up in his pickup truck, went back to his, his trailer where he was staying, got his pickup truck, came back, grabbed a bunch of us, took us to some fields that were like two or three miles away where they had watermelons. Got watermelon. So the dude ended up being our buddy. I uh, just <laughs> feed him a couple beers, and uh, it was awesome. Oh, killer, man. That's cool. Yeah. Well, hey, <laughs> but they were absolutely the, – the pipes were perfect. They were so smooth that they were actually grippy. Yeah. So oh, – no. which sounds kind of strange, but it was uh, – they were the, the, the most perfect thing to 
than any of us had ever skated. And I've skated skate anything that's quite that nice uh, today. So, they were, they were amazing moment long. in time. Uh -huh. yeah. We skated them a lot. And we, when we were there, nobody bothered us. We slept in the pipes. We were afraid of the scorpions if we slept on the ground. Yep. And, uh, and people drove back and forth to the construction site. They never really cared too much yeah, about Sometimes it. it was the best, depending on where they were. Sometimes it, uh, it was cool, as long as you didn't get too uh, crazy and out of hand. But sometimes they were just they were in the fucking middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you, you know, you're talking about Tay Hunt. And he would do that thing where he never lifted his wheels. Tay would just do that slidey thing where he had never, never did a kick turn. He would just slide. Just slide. Yeah. It was effort and just really, really elegant and smooth. And exactly. Smooth. And super powerful. You know, between Stropel and Hunt, you know, it's where I learned to do set slides. Because in the pipes, you could actually, it was almost like doing a front side thruster. When you're doing a set slide, you could actually get almost inverted. It would help you get a little bit higher as opposed to just trying to do a straight backside kick turn. Yeah, you can just go as high as you can, then just like just push it up higher. And it was yep. kind of smooth. This was, you know, pipeline pipe was rough at, at yep. the skate park. Oh, yeah. Not, those pipes out there mm -hmm. were smooth and easy to ride. Just really fun. Hey, yeah, Chris, they were super fun. Hey, Chris, can you talk about when you and Kyle came out and skated Skate in the Shade? Oh, yeah, when they when they're still working on it. Yeah, well, yeah. it was never completed. They never finished it. <laughs> they Mitchell came out with us, too. It's insights on Skate in the Shade. Oh, go ahead, Kyle. I remember um, Mitchell and I came to go pick up Chris, and um, he's like, what kind of music do you have for this ride? So we're heading oh. out to Arizona for a long trip. Oh, some Black Sabbath and Les Up, and he's like, we're heading to the, the record store. Went in there, and I had an eight track. <laughs> cars and some other Like, we're not listening to that shit. Then we uh, head out to Arizona. We get it, we get to make the first stop. And um, he, we're getting out, and Mitch, Mitch and I are grabbing our stuff. You're like, oh, we're not stopping here. Um, this is just a quick stop for me. So we go down there, we're sitting in the living room. Chris goes up there. All of a sudden, you're like, you're the this commotion going on upstairs like what the heck okay we're leaving now <laughs> stopped off at some girl's house over there <laughs> and we headed over to the hotel <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome the the skate the skating in, in arizona was amazing the i mean the quality and the you know everyone there was super nice you know treated us well and um, but Chris wouldn't take us to the pipes. He he went to the parks oh. only. Yeah. I don't know why, Chris. The the, uh, the pipes were probably the best thing I ever skated, ever. I mean, especially the downhill sections. Yes. That, it, yep. it was jaws at sixty foot. It was whatever. I mean, it was. <laughs> and, and how smooth they are. And in the further on on Hammond and on Tim's deal. Not only were they building these for the Saltwater River project, but they were building them for the MX missile project because we found pipes left down off the eight where there was never going to be any civilization ever. And they had about, oh, maybe a two inch black band inside the pipes. As we found out, that was lead. And why did they have lead lined pipes? Well, they, you know, that's when Reagan was, you know, all in this MX missile project thing. And, and those pipes were part of that. I'm almost positive because they had a huge. Hey Chris, wasn't there a pipe somewhere we discovered one that, that went straight up? I guess yeah. uh, Lake Perryessa. It had it had an opening where you know they could just move the, the missile and uh, basically move it up and launch it from that spot is what we surmised. Because why would you have that out in the middle of the desert? There was just no way. And these were way farther south than any of the stuff that we skated up up against the hills on the north north of the 10. These were down off the eight and down in that area where there's oh. there's no way they're gonna have any water down there or civilization. It's crazy. Interesting. I remember yeah. that. It was, uh, it was and those pipes were just incredible. Hunt, Hunt was probably the pure purest pipe skater known to man. Tay was. It was just incredible. Yeah. And, and Kurt will certify that. Kimball will. 
I mean, watching him skate upland and just and to go out there and skate those bikes, he was a joy, was just a joy to watch. He freaking just floated in them like nobody that ever had and has it since, literally. Yeah, we need to take a road trip and uh, go out and they're still there. I mean, there, there's got to be a way to get into them and ride them. I've got a buddy that sent me a picture four or five years ago of a line of pipes that comes out from under the ground and just stops with a big, big cap on the end of it where they had closed the end of it off and there's a door to go inside them. So, uh, Tony, you need to do some research for us, man, and uh, we'll, we'll get together for an old road trip. <laughs> no shit. That oh, is no. rideable. That, that no flat bottom, though, sounds like a hipper coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big one. <laughs> so I was just That's you guys were talking cool. about, about skate the shade because you guys rode it when you guys showed up there. You know, we had been riding it for a while, and you and Kyle showed up and completely changed everybody's line. And, uh, all of a sudden, as opposed to standing in the shallow end, we had to get out because you were the first guy. Everybody was riding the shallow end. We really started using the shallow end and, you know, coming off the hips and stuff like that. And it really, it was fun because you were doing four foot airs in a 13 foot deep pool. I mean, it was, it was with three inch coping. It was crazy. It was crazy. Well, and then the, the whole pipe with this, you know, what, a six feet of flat wall? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was nuts. Yeah. And they were going out to Schneider with Doug, and I mean, him wheeling off that thing was absolutely incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the dead cat bull. I remember the dead cat. Did you skate that? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And that was a that was a blast. It was a little rustic, but it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was a nice. good face wall. You kind of ride the sidewalls, but yeah. But it was way on the other side of town for us. Yeah, it was. It was out in the boonies, man. That was – Yep. Remember that we, it got late and everybody just turned on their headlights and we kept skating it. Uh, yeah. Just after that, the beer started flowing. And I, I had no <laughs> idea where we were. Triple. Triple. Triple, where are you? Uh-oh. Right here. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, so this is where the rest of it is. Gotta come visit. Do you have enough for the rest of the class? Hey. <laughs> you, you've been on the baking binge, like everybody else that's caught at home, you know? <laughs> Whoa. Uh, so uh, I've got a cool pipe story for you guys. A buddy of mine, uh, Brian Wainwright, uh, who's a roller skater. He's like a four-time world champion vert skater. He, uh, so it was probably 15 years ago, I was over at his place uh, one Christmas. And he said, hey, man, you know, I've got something for you. I'm like, what's that? He said, I know you used to ride these pumps, and I found this uh, poster, and you know, I'd, I'd like to give it to you. And I was like, I looked at it. I'd never really seen it before. I don't remember this being a skateboarder. I was looking at it. I was like, I, I want to say I was there that day. And I, I kept looking at it. I was like, hey, dude. You know this guy in the blue OP shirt over here, right underneath the cactus? So that's fucking me, dude. <laughs> awesome. He was like, no way. I was like, yeah. So I uh, actually made it into a Warren Bolster uh, poster. I'm just not the one skating in the photo. <laughs> Almost famous. <laughs> nice. Sweet. So I think this was pretty fun man and I appreciate everybody glad to be included thank and, uh, you guys yeah, yeah, thanks for the invite guys it's absolutely awesome I always thank we you were Jim, for including me. great idea I thought we could get together yeah thanks yeah. thank you guys. thank you so much <laughs> thank Captain thank guys, take care. Caster family Caster ladies thank See you guys and tomorrow thank you Caster yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely you. thanks Caster yeah. Meet Remember the boing. Remember the boing. <laughs> <laughs> boing. 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 Yeah, we need to bring the boing, boing back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, that two hours went by pretty quick. <laughs> and, and I'm it sure two we, hours? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we could be out yep. here for two more hours. Um, Easily. But maybe, maybe another day. So, Thanks, we'll Wally. Thank you, Wally. Thanks, Wally. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Chris.
and the whole crew. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, Chris. Thanks, Quality everybody. Chris. Chris. Tex and Chris. Faster forever. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Ken Thank you. Thanks, Ken Thank for hosting. You. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It was Thank great. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Ken. I'm not Thanks, seeing everybody. It was great. Good to see you, everybody. Yeah. Have a good Airland night. Mountain. Later, guys. Be careful. All right. Cheers, y'all. Get out. Oh, good. <laughs> Fucking hippies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Gary, come on. Congrats, John. That's been really nice. We're, and we're all really fortunate to be part of this group. Hey, no, this is cool, your time. Awesome. It's Heather Solano. A lot of fun, everybody. Thanks. Thank it you. Was awful. <laughs> God, good evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. How do you hang it went to the if it happened. How do you turn this off? <laughs> and no one's wearing a mask. <laughs> I have it on backwards. <laughs> All right, y'all take it easy, man. It's great. All right, Tex. Later, guys. Later. Hey, Dave Hanstrom, thanks for the killer boards. There he's off. All right. He's, Fish is the only one in uniform. <laughs> hey, Dave, tell Olson he owes me 100 bucks, dude, from last year. Yeah. Good luck. He took my surfboard, too, that motherfucker, man.